My name's Bronte. I'm the specialist keeper of the mammal section here at the Alice Springs Desert Park. And at the moment, we're in our sand country enclosure in the nocturnal house, looking at our two young, uh, genetically important marla. We're actually in the enclosure with our marla, and they're having their breakfast at the moment. Uh, the mum was hand raised. Um, but the young one wasn't, so we're quite excited about her future and, and who she's going to breed with. But because neither of them were too hand-raised to the point where they're used to people because we wanted them to breed, um, so, yeah, we do need to be reasonably quiet. They do get a little bit nervous, which is what you'd expect or, or hope, I suppose, for, for mammals that are trying to evade predators. So we have a, um, a marla recovery committee here in Australia, um, given that the marla are actually an extinct species in the wild in the mainland of Australia. Um, and they did genetic surveys of all the marla that we have in, in captivity in any section or in any area in Australia. Um, and our marla at the desert park were quite genetically distinct. Um, so they wanted to start mixing up the genetics to, to strengthen the genetic pool. Um, so these two marla are quite important to, to us at the desert park because they're not um, not from the Alice Springs Desert Park. They're actually from Yalara, and they were um, they were brought up here. Um, unfortunately, the mother's mother passed away during a, um, a census. Um, so she was brought up here to be hand raised. So we're hoping that these genetics, um, being different, will be able to get um, get con converted into our genetics, our um, our pool. Yeah. This is the baby, yeah, so you can see she's reasonably uh, reasonably brave. She was born in, in the nocturnal house and so she's lived all her life around people and around the keepers who are coming around and feeding her and stuff like that. So although she is a little bit nervous of us, she's definitely um, definitely more calm around people than, than a lot of the mala. So native predators would be things like dingoes, when they were around here, western quolls and thylacines and stuff like that, unfortunately, oh, and wedge-tailed eagles have been found to be preyed upon uh, or predated upon uh, by wedge-tailed eagles um, if, uh, if they are found out during the daytime. Um, but unfortunately, their major predators at the moment are cats and foxes, and cats and foxes are doing a, a very good job of predating a lot of native species. So um, that's the one of the main reasons these guys are extinct in the mainland. Um, genetic strength is obviously really important in nature as it is. A perfect example of why genetics is so important at the moment is um, COVID. So in a natural experience or in a natural setting and a, uh, a disease or a virus can wipe through a population, having genetic diversity um, will mean that there will be some or presumably there will be some individuals who will survive that have a natural immunity and then be able to survive and breed up again. So it creates, yeah, a, a population that is more able to cope with disease and stuff like that as well. <laughs>